My name is Tim Smith. I am Canon's Senior Technical Advisor for Film and per Television Production, um, which is sort of a mouthful, but it's a really good job. Um, I get to ride shotgun on some amazing projects, amazing television shows and films that use our gear and essentially try to keep the um, cinematographer from not liking our stuff. Um, as he had mentioned a few years ago, we stepped away from SLRs into the world of real cinema with the Canon 3, C300. That's a little over five years ago now. And then since I've graduated, the C300 Mark IIs, the C500s, and now the C700. And this C700, which is what you're here to see tonight, is a huge jump for us. It takes the camera from a really good image that people kind of found a reason to use it for different things into the real world of an A camera for a major motion picture in television. Uh, it, uh, As he mentioned, it is more expensive than anything we've, else we've ever built, but it is worth more than anything else we have ever built. Um, and compared to some of our lenses, it's really not that badly priced. Um, so what you're going to see tonight is a film that we put together called The Calling with our director, Tyler Staperford, who I will bring up in just a moment, and our cinematographer, Russell Carpenter, which was a short film that Tyler put together in his hometown of Carbondale, Colorado, um, featuring really just friends of his mountain climbers and hikers and there's a bar scene so I guess alcoholics as well but there's just friends of his that he put together this really beautiful film that Russell created some great images with on a C300 back in September and keep in mind this C700 yeah C700 keep in mind this was a camera that um, wasn't even painted yet it was a very early prototype tonight I'll show you some behind the scenes footage and you'll see a camera that's still not even black yet it's just silver it's just the magnesium that you're seeing um it's a big step. So I want to kind of give you a rough idea of what the camera is. I heard a gentleman earlier kind of looking it up on the website. Um, this is our C700. I'm going to give you some basic specs and different configurations that the camera is available in. Um, it comes with a super 35 millimeter CMOS sensor. Uh, and in this case, it comes in either an EF lock or a PL mount. So it's either going to use our still camera lenses, our traditional EF mount, or traditional cinema lenses that are PL. Um, it comes either way, but it is also interchangeable. So if you decided you wanted to use an EF version of it, uh, you can turn that into a PL version at our service center. We can, we can swap those mounts out for you. The sensor that's in this camera is a 4622 by 2496 4K sensor, actually 4.5K sensor. And um, that's a total of just under 12 megapixels. We're claiming 15 stops of dynamic range, and it's a very solid 15 stops. I think I'll let Russell address that, but we tended to see more than 15 stops. And we, can, we can definitely talk about that. Uh, and the sensor itself is dual pixel AF, meaning the EF version of it will also offer autofocus on our lenses that will autofocus. There's a second flavor of it coming later this year um, called the GSPL. It's a PL version with a global shutter. Um, a global shutter allows you to shoot uh, without the jello effect of motion that sometimes you see in, in uh, non-global shutter cameras as well as things like the half frames you see when flash bulbs go off or police lights and things like that. Um, you will lose one stop of latitude, get down to 14, which is still very respectable, still HDR. And the sensor itself will be 2374 by 2496 or just under 11 pixels. That's coming later this year. And again, it's interchangeable. So if you wanted... If you had the camera now and decided you wanted to go to the global mount, uh, the global shutter version of it, we will, in our service department, swap out the uh, non-global shutter for the global shutter version as well. It's a very flexible camera that way. This is also the first time we've ever introduced anamorphic into any of our cameras. And you will see in the film two anamorphic shots. The opening shot and the closing shot are both done on Cook anamorphic glass, shot in a 2.0 anamorphic style. But the camera will also handle a 1.3 squeeze as well. Recording files, um, tons of them, just about everything. So um, the onboard media is CFast, and it's CFast 4K in 10-bit up to 60 frames a second, uh, or 2K 12-bit up to 60, and then 2K 10-bit up to 240 frames per second in 2K in-camera record. You also have the options you see in ProRes. They'll get you up to 120 in ProRes if ProRes is your flavor. And then Kodaks is one of our partners, has created an integrated recorder system that um, mounts seamlessly onto the back of the camera, wirelessly to the back of the camera, integrates completely in. There isn't even a power button. Everything, once that Kodaks recorder is on, is controlled through the camera, and it's just a matter of selecting which media. Well, the film you saw tonight was shot uh, all on the Kodaks uh, at 4K. 
And with the cut X, you'll have the ability to get to 4K RAW up to 120 frames or 4.5K RAW up to 100. And then ProRes up to 240 as well, right to the codex. We went with some very industry standard connections this time, uh, which is a big plus in terms of getting moving things moving. Uh, in years past, we've had to go with rigs that were specially designed for our cameras or power supplies that were uniquely Canon. Now everything is very much an industry standard. The camera itself comes with a V-Lock. Uh, battery system on the back. The codex recorder comes with a gold mount on the back and you can interchange those yourself if necessary. If you're handy, if not, it can be done. Uh, and there's also adapters that go from V-Lock to, uh, to gold mount. The inputs are 12 volt, four pin XLR or 24 DC fissures on the Kodak. And the power outputs are also industry standards across the board. So for your first ACs, it becomes a very simple camera to have to deal with. On a little bit of a side note, I, uh, for those of you that kind of hung out in the lobby a little bit, plus if you want to see them afterwards as well, you'll see two monitors or a few monitors out there. We have the 2420 and the 1710. The 2420 is our um, high nit value HDR monitor. And we did make a special version of this film, an HDR pass, that you can see in HDR out in the, in the, uh, in the lobby on the monitor itself. Um, it's a stunningly different to see the HDR pass for this. Um, Russell will address a little bit about the dynamic range when we do the Q&A, but um, it, it's an amazing camera. Yeah.